interesting aspect um, for the Commonwealth and indeed um, for us, for us all. And I can hear people milling around you, Linda, as it does get more busy at Buckingham Palace as people pay tributes. Just briefly, on a personal level, you said you met Her Majesty several times. What was it like? Uh, she had a, an incredible smile that lit up the room. Um, doesn't matter how many times you meet her, it's always special. Um, and her interest in the charitable work um, that um, that um, I, as chair of the Royal Commonwealth Society, was doing, um, how our team was doing. I think I was always very struck by her interest and how involved she was in some of the projects that we delivered um, in her name. So I think on a personal level, every meeting um, was special, something to, uh, to look forward to. And you just know um, the Queen uh, would have had a question for you and, um, and listened intently to your answer. And I think it's um, mm. her personal touch, I think, is what uh, most of us um, will be reflecting on. All of us who have had the pleasure and the privilege of meeting her will certainly be uh, reflecting on um, what a remarkable life, what a remarkable um, figure. Dr. Linda Yeo, uh, Executive Director of the Royal Commonwealth Society, thank you so much. I tried this morning to reflect a little on how people are feeling this morning we spoke to people at Buckingham Palace who turned up and just had things to say, spoke to the world leaders too, but all sorts of people, including those from the stage and screen, have also been joining those voices. The actor Dame Helen Mirren, who played Her Majesty in the 2006 biopic The Queen, posted on her Instagram page, We mourn a woman who, with or without the crown, was the epitome of nobility. The singer Dame Shirley Bass, who performed Diamonds Are Forever, 90th birthday celebrations treated her courage was mighty her example iconic she was an unstoppable force fellow musician sir elton john said she led the country through some of our greatest and darkest moments with grace decency and a genuine caring warmth as paul mccartney tweeted simply god bless queen elizabeth ii long live the king morning you're watching a special edition of bbc breakfast on bbc news a nation mourns following the death of queen elizabeth ii her majesty died yesterday at balmoral bringing to an end a 70-year reign the queen's eldest son now king charles iii is at her bedside he'll return to london later today Tributes have been paid from around the world. Mourners are laying flowers at royal residences. As you can see, crowds are gathering at Her Majesty's London home, Buckingham Palace. They're paying their respects. Thousands have gathered in the evening. morning it's friday the 9th of september you're watching a special edition of bbc breakfast following the death of her majesty the queen britain's longest serving monarch passed away yesterday aged 96 at balmoral castle the scottish retreat which her majesty had visited since she was a girl the news was confirmed in a statement from the palace at 6 30 p.m after the queen's four children including the new king charles iii had traveled to balmoral on today's programme, we'll be remembering Her Majesty's life and legacy and speaking to those who knew and loved her. We'll bring you the latest reaction from Balmoral to Buckingham Palace and across the Commonwealth. First, our Royal Correspondent, Daniela Rabout, has been looking back at the final days and weeks of the Queen's life. 